Simpson throws it in deep, comes out for Scott Allen. Allen will curl in the corner, throws onto the slot, chance, they score! Champini on a one-timer. A little bit of daylight on the curl, and the Sheffield Steelers are one ahead. Daniel Champini getting his 15th of the regular season as we look again, Paul. Exactly as we've just been describing, Champini is such a threat goalwards there. Gets there, gets that bit of space perfectly between the hash marks, lays it home over Cozen. The, the blades just seem to somehow lose me, sort of blends into the background. If there's no one close to him, he's going to take advantages like that all day long. Goes and moves across, it beats him glove high. Yeah, and you know, Danny Champini, NCAA national champion at Union, uh, an ISHL all star as well. Real linchpin part of the Steelers organization for the last couple of years. Is Brady Norshaw curled back into his own zone, picked that puck up. Cook, nice stretch pass, takes it cleanly, throws on towards the net front, they tie it through Luciani! On the very next shift, Alessio Luciani takes the feed out in front, just redirects it high, block aside on Greenfield, and Coventry are on the board. What a start to this game by both teams. Well, everyone's got a tremendous sense of value. That's a fantastic pass from Cook, an even better touch by Luciani. In some games in the past, Luciani's been guilty of trying to be too fancy with it, maybe trying to do too much. Lovely little deflection there of a Greenfield blocker, top corner of the net, and now we've all woken up a bit. We'll see what happens here from the game. Greenfield goes and picks that one up behind his net. And, you know, that's the kind of chance the Coventry Blaze have got to take to beat Matthew Greenfield. You know, the, the ones he can see are getting stopped. They have to move them around, get redirections in front of him. And, you know, Luciani gets that one there. It's Valorant. Oh, there might be a breakaway here. Valorant can get that puck to Mitchell Balmas. He couldn't as he was under duress from the Blaze winger. Balmas is going to chip that puck in behind Norwich. So two on one to the back door. And they score. The Sheffield Steelers. And the Coventry Blaze exchanging goals here in the first period. A little throw to the back door on the confusion. I think it's Dowd with the final touch. And the Steelers have their lead back. So you can see a great pass across. It goes up. There's a question on the Blaze play. It seemed to think it didn't actually go in. The ref seems fairly certain. It would not surprise me if this went to video review. They're having a quick chat about it. No, I think that comes straight out the middle bar, Paul, for uh, fair Ro enough, Ro Robert Dowd's 20th goal of the season. The players will keep that alive through Carter Allen. Nice play from him at the line. Tolberg looks in, he fires off Greenfield. Great save by Matthew Greenfield. Let's take a look at this one again. I think it might have either caught him off the top of the shoulder or the cuff of the glove as he brings it up, Paul. But this is a big save from the big man. It was a wonderful one. Greenfield had minimal time to get across and square up. So you see it. Tolberg just takes his time, lines it up, and I think it's off the shoulder and out. Tolberg fakes over his shoulder. Can't get the real meat on that dumping that he wanted, and we might see a 2 one for the Steelers here. Usler carrying the puck, he's got support, throws the cross, a big one time, and they score! Marco Valorand upstairs, glove side, and the Sheffield Steelers shorthanded have got a two-goal advantage. The Blaze get sucked deep here in the offensive zone, and while well, Sheffield just kept their shape in the box, they win the puck, and that's a lovely release from Valoran for his 21st of the regular season. Absolutely model two-on-one breakaway on the shorthanded there. The keeper's trying to play the player, the defenseman's in the middle of nowhere, he's spread between the two but doesn't block the pass. Valoran puts it into the gaping net. There's Curran. Picks that redirected pass if the stick, he couldn't get the... Uh, Dump in as deep as he'd like. That pass picked off by Kukali though. Kukali flips it down the boards. The Blaze have got a two on one with Curran heading to the net. Spellacy to Curran, he scores! Lovely play by the Blaze in transition on the two on one. And Johnny Curran touches that puck five hole. His fifth goal of the year for the Blaze. And a big one with just under five minutes to go here in the first period. A very rare broken play there from the Steelers. The pass intercepted. The cross to Curran and Curran just at the right distance. Puts it through Greenfield's legs. This is, you know, this is exactly what the Blaze want. They need to be turning these to their advantage rather than giving up instead. So superb work from Curran, using his speed to get in the right place just for that touch to knock it in. Yeah. As the Steelers have the puck in behind the net of Cozen, Tansy throws out to the back door, they score! Pass down low through the low slot area. Tipped home by Scott Allen and the Sheffield Steelers have their two goal lead back. They're just able to open up a seam here through that pass from Champini. A wonderful little bit of vision from him goes a long way for that Sheffield Steelers goal. You can see they're just completely unmarked on the back door. 
you can't give the Steelers that kind of space and chances. There's only so much Cozen can do trying to go post to post against a guy about four foot away from the blue paint. And the Steelers restore their two goal lead just before the end of the period. Yeah. Loose puck gets in behind, a little backhand chip from Balmas, goes wide of the net. Kukali finds the puck in the corner. I didn't really like any of his options. He did the sensible play and just rimmed it round. That might give the commentary players a chance here. Added from him for Luciani. Out comes Greenfield aggressively to jump on it. The 50-50, and that's a confident netminder right there to come out and eat that one. It absolutely is, because if you miss that, you're toast. Especially with someone with Luciani's speed. He's, you know, he's not got one tonight. He's got one tonight already, and he's there. But you can see Greenfield just charges it down. If you hesitate for even a second there, he's taking that around you, and he wasn't far off. But Greenfield gets the glove on it and just about manages to make it safe. Face off to Greenfield's left and one in the defensive zone by the Sheffield Steelers. Blake Thompson had a bobbling puck coming towards him, just tried to shoo it almost uh, back out into neutral ice. And Sheffield Steelers defenseman in the corner, pops a tire, loose puck picked up by Luciani. Luciani scores! His second on the night, beating Greenfield low, block aside, short side, a big goal for Luciani and the Blazing. Poorly forced the Sheffield Steelers to make a mistake, trying to bring it out of their own zone. Simpson throws it up the wall to Luciani, and he throws it into the back of the net. What a game we're having here in the West Midlands. Absolutely superb. So you can see it. Luciani just comes onto the puck, backs himself, waits for the Sheffield player to just interrupt Greenfield's line of sight for the smallest moment and lashes it past him, making it 4-3. A one-goal game, and there's not even four minutes gone in the second yet. Dowd again, chips it in behind, Kukali. He's got to keep it away from Marco Valorand. He gets it to Curran. Curran, the sensible play, gets it up and out. Sheffield trying to come the other way. Puck gets in behind Kukali. Thompson, a bobbling puck for Dowd. Dowd's pass comes off the hip of Spellacy. Out for Sorcerman. Diffley takes that pass via the boards. Chipped in. Oh, the Sheffield Steelers. Taron Cozen, oh, he sees a Sheffield Steeler and Usula coming. Chance, they score! The Steelers right back on the front foot. They get their two goal lead right back. And it was almost like a, a different gravy from the Steelers. After conceding, they put the foot down. Marco Valoran with a finishing touch on this one. A, a mistake. Cozen can't clear his lines. And it's once again in the back of the net. And it's just a firefight here tonight in the Sky Dome. Cozen coming to play it there. You can be as sensible as you like, but if you look at his positioning within the paint, ideally with Valorant coming at that angle, he'd be about a foot or so further forwards. He'd be covering the angles better. But he's too busy there around at the back trying to play it. To an extent, when it's in like that, you, you can't make those mistakes as a goalie when you come out to play the book. Well, a giveaway from the Blaze in their own zone. Nichols is going to fire to the back door. They score. A big mistake by the Blaze in their own zone. Gives up a puck for the Sheffield Steelers. They had space. They had time. And they threw that puck into the back of the net on the back door tap. It's Cole Shudra with the final touch. And well, you don't miss those, Paul. Well, it's the fact there are two unmarked Steelers players waiting there for it. The blaze pass was meant for a player who'd already turned and headed up the ice. I'm all for being aggressive, trying to catch up with the game. But you can't leave three Steelers below the blue line with one, one and a half D, but effectively in the play on your end. Yeah, McNaughty in his own zone, another giveaway. Kukali able to poke that one out of the lane. And now Johnny Curran might be able to get a step on Tanzi. He shoots, glove saved by Greenfield. And oh, Johnny Curran, lovely opportunity. Tansy had closed the percentage down a little bit. I think Curran was thinking, I, I, there's no way I can really deke here as a righty onto the backhand. He thought that Tansy would be able to make a play. So he tries to slip it high glove side on Greenfield. And he's able to trap it kind of mid height. Lovely bit of net minding from the uh, Sheffield Steelers, number one. Two Allens meet along the Blaze bench. Scott and Carter. Puck dumped in. Scott Allen tries to brace the boards, but the Blaze will chip it in behind him. Talberg to the red line, floats it in. Him and Cook battling for it. Neverline and gets checked by Mitch Cook. Puck's going to come to Clements. Loads up a one-timer. Oh, there's a loose puck out in front. The Blaze are hunting for it. It's still there under the skates of Mitch Cook. Eventually, it's under the glove of Greenfield. I'll be some good old pushing and shoving as Kim Talberg was hunting for a, a loose puck. 
Greenfield did again really well to track it under a, a sea of skates and feet and Coventry Blaze doing what they need to do to be su su uh, successful in this game. Forcing a second puck off his pads and scoring, uh, you know, creating another scoring chance. Blaze will break it in across the line again, this time with Curran. Him and Cormier. Cormier throws a shove on Curran. Blaze get it off the stick of off the body of Christo, but the Stiffel Sealers are trying to force a two on one. They've got a three on two instead. Big chance, Cormier. Big pad save. Cozen, there's a loose puck out in front. He has to make another save off Champini. And again, the Sheffield Steelers shorthanded have the best scoring chance of the sequence. Absolutely, and I think the highlight of the power play, unfortunately, again, is a Steelers chance. You can see here as they pass across the middle, they've actually got the trailing man as well. So there's three Sheffield players, and the fact that Champini's grabbing it, Cozen is scrambling, but keeps his form in shape and puts it over into the netting. The last thing they want to do is concede another shorthanded goal here. It would. Christo gets bumped as he makes the play to McNulty. McNulty has the puck, throws a hard pass to the point. Allen, Rashad just wide, low, block aside. Greenfield ends up grabbing it and hanging it on. And again, the Coventry plays find a scoring chance if uh, you know, Carter Allen's able to get that one on target, maybe force a loose puck and a second chance for the Blaze in front of net. It could be different, but again, I think in this scenario, the, the Blaze don't really have an excuse to not find the target. They've got to make sure those pucks are between the pipes. Sheffield win that puck behind the net. Taken quickly away from Thompson, who recovers to his feet. Spellacy can't keep it away from Simpson. To the slot, oh, there's gonna be a chance in front for Ciampini, down low, couldn't really get the shot away. May have had the stick come across <coughs> from the blaze forward, and Johnny Curran defended. Let's take a look again, either way. And just sat on the uh, low left leg pad of Coase and another chance for the Steelers. It's a great one, it's the Steelers correct the turnover again, passes it across. Champini does great, Coase is trying desperately not to commit. And you can see that the Steelers player on the back door has actually been tied up by Kakali, which is good, which is why Champini went for it himself. Yeah. Mitch Cook will dig that out of the scrum. Brings it across the line. Trying to shield the Steelers player away from it. It's going to be a chance to the back door. Roth throws it and they score. Luciani. And the Coventry Blaze have got a fourth. Alessio Luciani with his third of the night. What an individual effort from him. And is that the comeback on here, Paul? I think it is. You can see here it's a fantastic where Luciani goes right to the net. Lethal from within one foot of the blue paint, it seems tonight. A great goal and a great way to finish off that penalty kill. And the Blaze are now two goals down with just under nine to play. Short side comes off the corner pipe. And we'll see if the Sheffield Cedars respond like they did in that second period when they conceded. They're just like a, a totally different team. <clears throat> Ramped up the energy quickly. Forced the base into a couple of mistakes. It's Kukali throws that puck off. Kobe Ross gonna on a bubbly puck have a chance. Good save by Greenfield. He is absolutely mobbed into the corner. To hooking minor on the Sheffield Steelers defenseman, and the Blaze are going to go on the power play. And it just feels like the tides in this game are starting to shift a little the last couple of shifts. Yeah, I think you can see here the Steelers player get that nine times out of ten. The one he doesn't, Roth's all over it, and he's in the right position. I think we're lucky from the, the Steelers are lucky from their point of view that that's a power play rather than a penalty shot. Yeah. Hitchcock's going to go in. Grab that one in the corner, holds it up. Talberg coming down, trying to help out again. It's smushed against the dasher eventually. It'll come around for Dudek. He'll just want to take a second here. Let Coventry get into some shape, not force anything. He does exactly that. Gets it back from Thompson. Looks in, fires down. No, there's a rebound out in front. It's bobbled just wide via a stealer via Cook. Dudek keeps it alive in the offensive zone. Great bit of work there, and again, you know, the rebound's coming out of Greenfield this time, but there's Blaze players there wanted to take advantage. And Blaze have numbers down low, but the pass sort of halfway between looking at the man on the back door and the defenseman pinching in. It was between the two of them. <clears throat> and the Blaze end up kind of creating a, a zone exit for the Steelers. And they'll go mop up back in their own zone, of course, and you know, we'll look to start up ice again. With a fresh unit out there. Current flying through the neutral zone. Throws a bit of a wild one through the neutral zone that comes off a body. Blaze have just got to secure the puck in the offensive zone in transition here. They've been forced to throw it a little uh, east-west. Now Champini's got a breakaway, he scores! Through the legs of Cozen, another short-handed goal. And the Sheffield Steelers back to a three-goal advantage. 
We'll take a look at this one again. The Blaze, you feel a, a little bit of the architects of their own undoing here. They couldn't secure the zone offensively. They end up getting an odd man rush, turns into a clear breakaway. Champini gets the second of the evening. Hopkins, minute to go in this game. A valiant effort from the Blaze. They'll be frustrated looking at it again tomorrow as they had a chance to win this one. Here's McNulty, fucking his feet. Able to twist and turn and control it. Hopkins backhands it out in front, got away from Norrish. He's sprinting at it, Brady Norrish. He's going to quite pull it in. Rough on the dump. I think the Blaze in particular be ruined the, the power plays and the two short-handed goals. They've been the absolute nail in the coffin. Rather than man advantage being a blessing, it's very much been a curse for the Blaze tonight. Yeah, look, the two short-handed ones will sting, absolutely. Um, and frankly, they had enough chances, uh, you know, enough power play opportunities to, to get one behind Greenfield. Um, offensively, four goals against a team that just frankly don't concede that many. You know, the Coventry Blaze have... Um, essentially doubled up what you usually get against the Steelers and a little bit of extra. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's just been one of those nights where too many mistakes, frankly, have cost them. This puck's going to come the other way. Chance right out in front of the Blaze defenseman, I think, maybe played it off the uh, pads of Tarrant Coast. He makes his final stop for the night. And the Sheffield Steelers go now to Wednesday's game against the Cardiff Devils. I, I'm pretty sure, Paul, if they win that one, that's, uh, that's the league. 